everybody. So last weekend, Ivan and I finished the OC Hardman Classic, the short course, which is a mixed terrain race covering 60 something miles and over 5,000 feet of climbing. Now that's like three times the length and elevation of a typical weekend ride for us. I don't know about Ivan, but I'm toast. So this week I've been taking it pretty easy and I've exclusively been rolling around on this, the Jaceon, Jaceon, Jaceon EB7 folding electric bike sent over to the channel that I've been testing on and off for a couple of months. Now this is not a paid sponsorship and while they did send the bike over for review, all thoughts and opinions are my own. So stick around and find out what I like and dislike about this fun and zippy grocery getter and see what, if anything, sets it apart from the others in a sea of similar budget direct-to-consumer electric bikes. The EB7 features a 500 watt hub motor, good for a top speed of up to 20 miles an hour. It's powered by a 48 volt, 10 amp hour removable battery that sits in the rectangular top tube or down tube, whatever you call this part of the frame. Now the claim is 20 to 40 miles per charge, but we'll see about that in just a minute. Now it's got a seven speed Shimano derailleur in the rear. Now it's got compact 20 inch wheels with a three inch wide tire. Now the frame set, and check this out, is full suspension. So you get 80 millimeters of front travel on the basic Kind of looks like a Sun Tour fork, and an undisclosed amount of rear travel in the kind of industrial looking rear shock. Now, does it work? Well, the front fork, sure, it definitely helps to smooth out the ride, but the rear shock, it's kind of hard to say. I can get it to move a little bit when it's stationary, but the actuation isn't super smooth, and I kind of feel like a rigid frame would have just been fine. It's got mechanical disc brakes, which actually work pretty well to stop the 59 pound bike. Yeah, I know it's not particularly light. It also comes with a really solid rear rack, some plastic fenders that I didn't really bother with, and also a light and horn combo for the front. It also features a simple yet well-designed head unit that displays key information like current speed, current assist level, battery level, and odometer, and is bright enough to see in direct sunlight. The whole bike folds up too, so you can put it in a car or store it a little bit more compactly, I suppose. Although if you're imagining those older Dehan folding bikes or like a Brompton folding bike, while the JCN folds in a similar manner, it's definitely not compact when folded up. It will probably fit in the trunk of most cars, but it wouldn't be practical for a bus or a subway commute. Did I mention it's also 60 pounds? Now on days like today when my legs are still rubber, the ability to use the throttle and just go is, yeah, it's pretty good. See how it does on the hill climb. It's gotta be 10% right here. 12 miles an hour, not bad. Okay, so what do I really like about this bike? I do like that it's relatively compact and it's just pure function with plenty of power and range. Actually, speaking of range, the claimed 20 to 40 miles on JCN's website is probably in pedal assist mode as opposed to full throttle mode and at a lower assist level, like a one or a two. So I can't actually speak to whether or not you would get that full range since if we're being totally honest, I've pretty much only been riding it around at level five, which is the maximum level. Now in this rather extreme case, I've been getting roughly 15 miles on a full charge, which actually isn't too bad considering I'm basically just running it full blast 100% of the time. Actually, I'm gonna cut in here for a second. I've actually been getting 15 to 20 or so miles on a charge, so that's per charge. That doesn't mean I'm letting the battery totally drain. I usually charge the battery when it gets down to about one bar, and there are five bars. So I would say easily the capacity at full blast, again, level five, is probably 20 to maybe 22 or 23 miles. Okay, that's it. Now I also like that the tires aren't crazy wide at three inches. It does seem like a lot of the e-bike brands are going with a four inch wide, 20 inch diameter tire, when honestly these three inch tires are plenty wide. Now as far as off-road capability, I've taken this thing on some legitimate trails and the tires have done just fine. Now I also really like that the bike actually hits 20 miles per hour on flat roads. It's not super fast, but it's honestly probably about as fast as I'd want to go on this particular bike whose geometry and riding position 
aren't really suited for high speeds. Now, as far as dislikes, there are few, but they're not really deal breakers, I'd say. Now, probably the biggest thing, which I haven't mentioned yet, is the power delivery in pedal assist mode. Now, I don't have too many other bikes to compare to, but I know that the EB7 here uses a cadence-based power delivery, as opposed to power meter sensing, which means it detects when the cranks are turning and uses that to kick the power on and off. Now, it's not the smoothest power delivery, and it can catch you off guard the first time you ride it. Now, the other thing is that the handlebars are just a little bit too narrow, in my opinion. Now, yes, I know it's a city cruiser and not intended for any extreme circumstances, but a slightly wider handlebar would definitely give me more confidence, especially when I go off-road. And then there's the rear suspension. I just really don't see a need for it. I think maybe I felt the benefit of it once or twice when rolling over an unexpected bump, but it's nothing like a rear air shock on a modern mountain bike. Now I think a well-designed rigid rear triangle would help a lot to shed some weight, and I really don't think anyone would miss the rear shock at all. And lastly, this one is up for debate, but I don't actually think it needs to be a folding bike, to be honest. Now I definitely get the appeal of a folding bike, like a Brompton, for instance, where you can actually fold the thing up and easily carry it onto a bus or a train, but this EB7, even after you fold it, it's still 60 pounds. So you're not gonna use it as a long distance commuter and be able to get it on and off public transportation very easily. Now, probably the biggest benefit is that when it's folded up, you can probably fit it into a trunk of a car, which you probably otherwise couldn't do. But I think that may be the only instance when the folding function of the EB7 is actually valuable. So those are some of my thoughts on the JCN EB7 electric bike. There are tons of other e-bikes in this sort of compact 20 inch category. But I think what I like about the EB7 is that it strikes kind of a decent balance in this space. It's not the most powerful or the highest capacity, but it's also cheaper than a lot of the other options at $1,000 US in mid to late 2022. I also like these slightly narrower, but still pretty wide tires. And I like that it uses alloy spoked wheels as opposed to some of the bikes which use those plastic mag type wheels. I also like that it's pretty low maintenance. It uses standard off the shelf drivetrain components and it's really pretty easy to get up and going. Now, at the end of the day, it's all around just a really fun bike to ride. And if you can get the idea of performance out of your head, and just treat this like a practical city moped, good for running errands and cruising around town, then it's a pretty solid value for what you get. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I know this one was different. I am gonna get back to our normal content, whatever that is, over the next few weeks. I have a review of the Goodyear Connector gravel tires in the pipeline, as well as some more stuff on the Redshift Shock Stop versus Future Shock suspension systems. And then I also have a longer term review on the Loon Grapid 700C carbon wheels. So, you know, stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.